Hey, it's Amanda Zeba, the Word Nerd, here to teach you all about the amazing Hemingway Editor app so that you can polish up your paper, impress your teachers, and earn that gold star grade. Before we dive in, I want to ask if you've ever been in this situation. Let's say you've got a paper to write, and maybe you wait a little bit longer than you should to begin those revisions, and now the paper is due, like tomorrow. It's too late to email your teacher, and even though your mom said she would help, she already went to bed. You go to your brother for help, but he has his own homework to do and those peer reviews, yeah, there's no time for that. You start to panic. Sound familiar? Well, don't worry because a Hemingway editor is free and easy and can totally help you out no matter how late you wait to start editing your essay. Step one is to head to www.hemingwayapp.com. You might be curious why it's called the Hemingway app. It's named after Ernest Hemingway, one of the most famous American novelists. What's special about Hemingway is that he didn't drone on and on and in long, complicated sentences and fancy language like many other writers of his time did. Instead, according to Brian Clark in his article on Copyblogger, Hemingway knew how to get to the point. He was famous for a terse, minimalist style of writing that dispensed with adjectives, and in short, Hemingway wrote with a simple genius. And that's what this app is going to help you do, get rid of all the clutter and help you communicate clearly. When you get to the main screen, you're going to see some text already input into the page for you. This is to show you how the app works. You'll see that some of the text is highlighted in different colors, and you'll also see a key that will show you what those different colors mean. If something is highlighted in blue, it means it's an adverb, and it might be unnecessary. If you hover over the adverb, the app will let you know whether you can delete it entirely or if you should replace it with another word choice they recommend. If something is highlighted in green, it means that it's using passive voice. Passive voice means that the verb comes before the noun or the subject and therefore can make things unclear for the reader. If you hover over that color of highlighted text, it will encourage you to instead use active voice. If something's highlighted in pink, it means that that word could have a simpler alternative, a synonym, or something that's easier to understand. If you hover over those words on the app, it will suggest a simpler word to use. Now, not all fancy words need to be eliminated from your paper. In fact, you might be proud of some of those fancy words and want to keep them. By selecting these words, the Hemingway editor is just letting you know that sometimes not all fancy words are better. If you can say it in a simpler way, Hemingway would suggest that you do it. But in the end, the choice is up to you. The yellow and red highlighted words are perhaps my most favorite. These highlights let you know what a sentence is hard to read, if it's yellow, or very hard to read, if it's red. Maybe you've used a complex sentence structure or some high-level punctuation. Being highlighted doesn't necessarily mean that it's wrong or incorrect grammatically, just that it might be a little bit hard for your reader to follow. These highlights are encouraging you to rephrase these sentences, to possibly break them up and rewrite it in a different, more direct way that's easier to understand. Okay, now that we know what these highlights mean, let's do a live example so you can see how it works. All right, here we are on the Hemingway app website. What I'm going to do is head over to Google Docs to a blog piece that I wrote for my blog. It's mostly for authorpreneurs full of writing tips and marketing tips. And I'm going to copy and paste the first three paragraphs of this post and bring it over to the editor. I'm going to highlight what they have and get rid of it. And I'm going to paste in my words. And so then we can look over here on the side in the key and see what Hemingway thinks is wrong with my writing. If we click on the first one, we'll just go line by line. I'm in the process of writing a first draft. You can see that this is pink. That means that it has a simpler alternative. And they're just saying, I don't even need those words. Instead of saying, I'm in the process of writing a first draft, I can just say, I'm writing a first draft. OK, good. We got it. Next one. This one, this yellow phrase, so that it's long. It's kind of hard to follow. A common question I get while leading writing workshops and prevent, presenting for school visits is how do you come up with character names? So maybe I can just take off this first part. How do you come up with character names is a question I am frequently asked. Okay, you can see that the yellow highlight went away, but in revising, I now have a blue highlight. It is uh, 
a blue one, meaning an ad, uh, adverb that I could get rid of, but you know what? I don't want to get rid of that one frequently. People do ask me a lot. How do you name characters? So uh, I'm going to leave it. I see this other blue word here, just, just as a word that we all use in our common everyday informal speaking language all the time, but really you don't ever need it in your writing, rarely. So I'm just going to get rid of that one. Okay. It still is leaving that sentence read which says more often than not though, a name will have a specific layer of meaning for the story, sometimes significant or other tongue in cheek. But either way, for me as a writer, names come to me or are chosen, if not in a meaningful way, in a way that has meaning. I can agree, this is long, it's hard to follow. So let me quick do a little uh, revision here and see if we can make this red go away. All right, we've revised this to say, as an author, I choose a name that has a specific layer of meaning for the story. Sometimes the choice is significant and other times it is tongue in cheek. But either way, for me as a writer, I choose names if not in a meaningful way, in a way that has meaning. Better, no highlights, good. And then I can come back down here. One last thing, again, we're gonna get rid of just. And I can probably just cut out this middle phrase instead of saying to actually help you rather than ramble about my own writing process. Here are four websites I use when on the hunt for a good character name. And if I take out this middle chunk, we're going to see that I am good to go. I will then copy and paste this text, head back over to my blog post and replace it. And I'll be good to go. And I can move on with the rest of my article doing a paragraph at a time. All right, no more procrastinating. It's time to start revising. But before you do, could you please like this video and maybe subscribe? And you should totally come back for more reading and writing content from me, The Word Nerd.